Hi there, I'm Vincent Boss and I provide dating and self-improvement advice. And in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing growing after a breakup. I provide audio and email coaching to help people try and get their ex back or get a new girlfriend or boyfriend. Check out my website for more details, www.dateme.tips. Please check your spam and junk folders if you are expecting an email from me. So now let's get back into today's podcast and today we are discussing growing after a breakup. So going through a breakup is incredibly painful and in today's podcast I'm going to be giving you three pieces of advice of how you can grow after a breakup has taken place. So let's get straight into this and number one is get your finances in order. So I'm not suggesting that you do anything sudden or drastic, but it's very important to look at your financial obligations. After the dust has settled and you adjust to single life, it's important you are paying for the things you need to and no longer paying for the things that you don't need to. So when we're going through a breakup, our feelings and our thoughts are all over the place. We are not thinking clearly and we certainly are unlikely to be thinking of our financial obligations. But as I said, once the dust has settled, once you are adjusting to single life, you need to be trying to think with a clear mind about your finances. It is quite possible that you would be paying for things which you no longer need to do because they are actually for your ex. Now, if this is the case, you, of course, don't want to be paying for things that you don't need to. But you also need to try to be sensitive to that situation. Even if you're feeling very angry, even if you're feeling bitter at this point, you need to really try to think sensibly. In particular, if one day you are hoping to try to get your ex back, you of course don't want to be causing a storm by using this kind of situation as a way to try to get one over your ex, so to speak. You don't want to be trying to kind of get them back in a negative sense by proving that, you know, you are the person who is paying for their things. And if they're not going to be with you, then you're just going to cut off that supply. You know, you need to be careful. You need to be understanding. You need to be thoughtful during this very difficult time. But at the same moment, you also don't want to be paying for things you don't need to. It might be very difficult for you to be able to afford lots of things for your ex and yourself when you are now single. So you certainly shouldn't be paying for things you don't need to. But what I am saying is just be delicate in how you go about sorting this out. Okay, you need to be sensible. You need to be thoughtful, even when it's very, very challenging to be so. You need to consider the fact, you know, for instance, if you are paying for the electricity in your house that you shared with your ex and maybe now you've moved out. You don't just want to cut off that electricity just because you're actually paying the bill. You need to be a little bit more thoughtful, even if you feel that you have been hard done by. You need to be the bigger person, so to speak. You need to be thinking of a bigger picture. And although you don't want to be paying for these things, you need to do it in a delicate manner. Additionally, you might be in a position now where you really have to consider how you are going to be living on your own with your own finances just for you. For example, you might now be in a position where you actually need to look at what you should be paying for that you wasn't previously. So if we was to flip the situation round, maybe your ex was paying for some of the things which you took for granted and all of a sudden that stopped. Maybe they are not being as thoughtful as I've just suggested and maybe without even speaking to you, they've just cut off your energy supply. You, who knows? what might happen. It might not be quite as serious as this, but you just need to be looking at all of these situations because you need to be making sure that whether you are paying for things and you shouldn't be, or whether you aren't paying for things and now you need to be, you need to be making sure this is sorted and ready for the next chapter of your life. So now let's get into point number two, and that is improve your skill set. So I suggest that you look online for ways to improve your knowledge and your skills. And then you need to consider joining clubs, groups and classes. These are great ways to mix with new people, to make new connections and also improve yourself. So clubs, groups and classes are a wonderful way to meet new people and improve your skills 
but also to improve your general knowledge of the world, you might say. If you're mixing with new people, you're always learning from them as well, additional to whatever class you are going for initially. But I appreciate that it can be difficult after a breakup to go straight into joining clubs, groups and classes. And hence, I suggest you look online for ways to improve your knowledge and your skills. There are many three places you can look online, such as YouTube, and you could find ways to learn new creative skills. You could learn new ways to do anything that you have considered in the past, but never had time or opportunity to look into. This is now your moment. I've said things before, it could be something such as learning how to cook, it could be something such as learning a new language, it could be something such as learning how to change a car tyre, you know, it could be a whole range of things, or it could be a little bit more academic, where you want to actually learn a skill or gain a qualification which will enable you to get a job in a different sector to what you are doing right now, or maybe you want to even look into how you could start your own business. All of these things can be done by looking online and joining clubs, groups and classes. Quite often, you can do a lot of things for free, which is even better to start off that way. And then when you feel ready and you're thinking straight, you might want to invest a little bit of money and really get some type of qualification. Or if you're joining a club or a group or a class, maybe you have to pay to be a member. At that stage, you can invest when you're thinking straight and you feel ready. But if you do these things, then you will see certainly be improving yourself and you will be growing as a person. You will be becoming a better version of yourself, a version 2.0, and that will be more attractive to not only your ex, but also to brand new people. So now let's move into point number three and the final part of today's podcast, and that is to become healthier. So I suggest that you remove bad substances from your life get enough sleep and eat healthy, exercise regularly and get into a manageable routine. So all of those things I've just said are excellent ways to improve your health and fitness. Now it can seem a little overwhelming if you were to try to do all of those things at once, but look at them one at a time and chip away at them. It's always important to do things which are manageable though. There is no point in getting to an intense exercise exercise regime which you can't maintain. So, for instance, if all of a sudden, you know, maybe you don't exercise at all and now all of a sudden you're thinking to yourself, you know what, I'm going to jump in to do an exercise every day of the week. And for seven straight days, you do exercise. And then you've worn yourself out. Maybe you've pulled a muscle. Maybe you're just fed up of it. And all of a sudden you decide, right, I'm not going to do this anymore and you don't do exercise for another two months before you think, maybe I should do it again. That is not good, okay? You want to be manageable. Doing something once a week is much better than doing it five, six, seven times a week, and then not doing it again for two months. Do something manageable. Get into a routine that you know that you can maintain. Now, you've got to be thinking where you're at at the moment. If you are already quite fit, then you want to be adding on to that. But if you have not exercised before, or if you exercise very little, then just increasing it by going on an extra walk a week, two extra walks a week, can be very, very powerful. And you will see the difference in yourself within a few weeks of doing this. Additionally, I always suggest people do things such as sit-ups. If you do sit-ups before bed or maybe sit-ups when you wake up, that can be something you can really connect your routine of waking up or going to sleep. Just do some sit-ups before you go to sleep or after you wake up, get into that routine. And again, that can be something which you feel the benefits and you can see the benefits after not many weeks at all. It's very important to stay as fit and healthy as possible, not just for the obvious reason of that it will help you live a longer and happier life, but also because the byproduct of health and fitness is attractiveness. You will become more attractive to your ex and to other brand new people if you exercise, if you eat healthy, if you get enough sleep, if you remove bad substances from your life. You can do this. I believe in you. Make sure you start this new routine tomorrow. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please consider buying me a coffee. The link to do so is in the description. 
Yeah, if you miss your ex, we can help with that Help you get him back, or we can help find you someone else Yeah, yeah, Vincent Bo, the relationship coach uh, Giving you some insight, bringing you a new approach DateMe.tips, go and check the site uh, Giving you advice, helping with your love life Get your ex back, or move to the next Ain't no sweat, you know Vincent Bo got you Finding love, ain't no problem, yeah DateMe.tips, check it out now